Thanks everybody for joining us for our webinar today, pre-targeting for ABM success. Um, we've got a great presentation here uh, with two special guests. First of all, I'd like to introduce Marnie Reed. She's the VP of Strategic Alliances and Chief Evangelist at PFL. Thanks for joining us, Marnie. Thanks, Colin. And we've got Gil Alouche, who's the co-founder and CEO of Metadata.io. How are you today, Gil? Doing well, thank you, Colin. Okay, great. So a couple of logistical items before we get the webinar started. Um, first of all, we are recording today's session and we will be sending the recording uh, to all who attended uh, within about 24 hours or so after the uh, conclusion of the presentation. We will also be taking Q&A and uh, we'll be taking questions at the end of the presentations. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to use the, the question box uh, in your GoToWebinar panel and enter them at any time, but we'll be taking the questions at the end of the presentation. So before we kick off uh, the presentations, I just wanted to, um, Gil, if you can move the slide one forward here. Uh, we talk about pre-targeting in, um, uh, in the title of this webinar, and I just wanted to tee it off a little bit about what pre-targeting is for those who might, might not be familiar with the term. I think a lot of marketers, are, or most marketers should be familiar with retargeting which is when you, you know, uh, when you when you have uh, visitors to your website and then you target those people based on uh, a cookie that you put on their browser, you target them with ads, try to get them to come back and, and, and convert into leads. With pre-targeting, we're talking about engaging contacts from accounts that you're trying to target. And these could be people who have never heard of you or never visited your site. And what you're trying to do is get in front of them uh, in advance of uh, them coming to you so that you're, you know, when you're when you're doing uh, follow up on leads, um, or if your uh, BDR teams or your sales team are doing outbound calling, that the folks have seen your ads and are hopefully somewhat familiar with you. And um, what we're seeing is that we're, companies are getting great ROI uh, to uh, when when they're doing these types of pre-targeting programs. And so in today's presentation, we're going to talk about pre-targeting two ways. First, online. Uh, and Gil's going to talk about that, and then and then Marnie's going to talk about sort of pre-targeting on the ground through direct mail and uh, and sort of more um, tangible pieces of content that uh, that you can send out to your leads. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Gil, and he's going to talk about uh, what Metadata I/O can do on the pre-targeting front with online ads. Gil, thank you very much, Colin, and hello everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to to run this webinar this morning. So I'm going to cover a lot of the programmatic, practical kind of um, best practices for running account-based targeting and how it can be used for your B2B organization to generate predictable pipeline. So let's start with, with the pain uh, or the challenge. You know, today's CMOs, the, the modern CMO is expected to generate pipeline for sales. It's not a secret. Um, you know, marketing is working for sales. The purpose is to make sure that sales has enough pipeline, many enough leads, to, to work on, whether it's top of the funnel uh, leads, whether this new leads, sales acceleration, so on and so forth, that's the, the main main job, main focus for a B2B marketeer. However, it's becoming increasingly difficult to actually run that process because there are, uh, you know, every marketeer is flooded with technologies that are siloed and really the marketing teams are spending all day long, all week long operating those those technologies you know, buying data, segmenting data, coming up with UTM tags, doing A-B testing, setting up campaigns manually, so on and so forth. And one of the challenges is that because the, t the marketing teams are spending all day long operating those tools, kind of doing technical, repetitive, mundane tasks, they don't really have much time for optimizing their digital marketing mix, trying to figure out what is working, what is not working, which ebook is working, which white paper, what persona are resonating well with that content, what creative should we should we try, what copy product marketing is providing that is working, which one isn't. Um, essentially, understanding the best mix of of your digital marketing components, and so because they're, they're they're spending all of their time operating those those tools, there is no time to actually do that optimization. And A/B testing, which is a feature really in in some of those tools is is kind of uh, failing us because it gives us a false positive that we're actually doing optimization while the optimization is extremely shallow you know testing two subject 
uh, when you're sending an email is extremely basic. What if, what about the content? What about the, the personas that are seeing your email? What about the segment of the company who are seeing your email? Um, the content that you're, that you're amplifying, the channel that you're amplifying in the, the, the campaign type. There are too many moving pieces to just use A-B testing for, for optimization. And so that's where we introduce our, our platform. We, we built a solution that essentially completely automates your account-based advertising. It allows you to very quickly put all of your inventory of content, creative, your, you connect all of your channels and your existing marketing stack to metadata. And what will happen is metadata will find out based on historical data, who should you go after? build those audiences automatically, and then execute campaigns on your behalf in an automatic fashion. It will actually go on Facebook, start you know dozens to hundreds of campaigns, depending on your budget. If you're spending um, in the millions, you can get to tens of thousands of, of experiments and campaigns per, per year. If you're in the, in the hundreds of thousands, you can be in the hundreds. And if your budget is, is five to 10 grand um, in, in media spend a month, you can run dozens of different experiments. And the idea is to really find out what works, what doesn't, and then double and quadruple your investment where, where it's working. And the result is a predictable inbound pipeline from your named accounts. So let's talk about the best practices to running a successful account-based advertising um, campaign and operation. So the first step, and that's kind of our blueprint uh, at Metadata. The first step is always identifying the accounts you want to go after. And so you're trying to understand what exact companies, what list of companies you should go after and what particular people within those companies you should start targeting. And so it starts by perhaps working with your sales counterpart. Perhaps they already have a named account list that they want to go after. You also might want to look at your historical Salesforce data to see, based on your historical success, what types of companies and what types of persona did you successfully sell to your largest deals, your quickest deals, your competitive deals. And Metadata can help you with that. Essentially, by looking back into your Salesforce data, what Metadata will do is it will pull all of your opportunities, all of your historical opportunities from Salesforce. It will rank them so that uh, you know, a million dollar opportunity that was close one after three months is gonna be ranked higher than a $50,000 opportunity that took a year to lose. But nevertheless, it will take all of them into consideration. And then it will enrich all the information around those opportunities and accounts. So even if all you had in Salesforce is the company name that you sold to and maybe the two personas or the two people that were involved, Metadata will go and grab data from, from vendors like ZoomInfo and InsideView and AG Data and Bambora and many other data vendors, and the idea is to create a very wealthy data set of exactly who did you sell to, who was involved in the sale, what type of company is that, you know, what groups do they do the persona belong to, what skills do they have, their education, their job title, the seniority, the group, uh, in terms of the companies, what technologies are they using in the back end, in the front end, what buyer intent category did they belong to when they purchased, so on and so forth. The idea is to really understand to the detail what type of profile of company and what type of profile of personas did you uh, successfully engage with to close that deal? And then based on that historical knowledge, we, we have a predictive model that goes back to those data sources, inside view and AG data and Bombora and many of those others, and figure out br bringing essentially net new data sets uh, of companies and persona to target based on that historical profile. So even if you penetrated, let's say 30% of the um, manufacturing industry, because that's been historically your success, there might be still 70% opportunity for you in total addressable market to go after. Metadata will reveal to you those accounts and particularly find the right people who are identical to the same people that you sold to in the past for those manufacturing companies and will reveal to you those particular personas within those companies. And only then, when you've confirmed with your sales counterpart that these are the accounts to go after and these are the people to go after, only then you actually start running campaigns and metadata will run campaigns against those people. So this is the pre-targeting uh, notion that Colin was referring to. You don't spend your time and your advertising spend before you know for a fact who you're going after within which account. It also solves for a big problem with attention with sales. Because with sales and marketing, there always uh, is the, the attribution discussion, the who, who did what, uh, who gets the credit. But really when you bring the sales um, VP or the CRO into the discussion and you tell them, 
come help me build that list. I want to gen make sure I only generate the right kind of personas to come inbound for you. Uh, that makes the, the process and the working relationship much healthier. So once you have a list of accounts and a list of people to go after, this is where you move to the engage phase. This is where you want to get all of the personally identifiable information for those particular personas within those target accounts so that you can go and start targeting them with advertisements. Now, you may not know what exact content resonates with what persona, what channel do they hang out the most in, what campaign type do they respond most to, is it sponsored content, is it a legion campaign, is it a display ad, a retargeting, a native content. Um, and you really don't know what's the best combination. You don't know which offer goes with which persona on what channel, what campaign type, what segment of the audience, so on and so forth. So the best way to figure out how to how to find that ideal combination is by experimenting. And that is really the power of, of metadata, the ability to take many different variables, channels, audiences, offer type, asset, ad text, ad creative, which is usually being done in a very manual form. Usually you will see in large companies that have the resources or companies who are paying large sums to agencies, what those teams will do is they will open a huge spreadsheet with with maybe dozens or hundreds of UTM tags for each and every one of those campaigns, and will they'll start shuffling through that. The challenge is that one, is prone to error when humans do that, and two, it's a very boring, repetitive task, and there is a limit to how many campaigns a person can run. They can run 10 campaigns a month, 20 campaigns a month, 30, 40 if they're amazing, but it's no comparison to an artificial intelligence engine that can run thousands of campaigns for you a month with the, really with the ability to quickly eliminate those that are, that are not successful and really focus on those campaigns that are generating pipeline. You can talk about impressions and clicks and conversions and cost per lead, but eventually the metric that you really want to optimize towards is pipeline. And that ability is saved for a computer because it has the capability to really run through thousands of different variables at a time and optimize towards one metric. And so going back to the experimentation phase, what, what we're showing here is a classic use case where you have three different channels that you want to run on. So maybe Facebook, LinkedIn, and programmatic advertising. You have five different audiences that you're going after. Maybe there are only 2,000 companies in the whole wild world that you can actually sell to. But instead of going after all 2,000 companies with the same message, with the same creative, with the same content, what metadata will do, it will segment them for you. Let's segment those 2,000 companies by industry. Let's segment them by their stack. Maybe they're using a complementary product to yours, or maybe they're using a competitive product to yours. If they're using a competitive product to, you, to yours, you should have a different message to that particular company. Maybe we can segment by the seniority of the persona we're going after, or their function in the organization. Maybe we can, function, we can segment by the size of the organization. A company that has 100 employees might, might get a different message in a company with 10,000 employees. And so, the, the metadata platform will be able to segment the audience for you. And then imagine going with two different offers. Maybe you have a landing page with a PDF uh, of your white paper, and maybe you have a legion form with an ebook that you that you would like to offer. Same thing goes for the ad creative. You have multiple ad creatives and banner ads, multiple copies that you may want to try, uh, one with a question mark, one with an exclamation mark, um, and the different assets that you're working with. And so you really have many different, and this is kind of the reality for the modern marketeer. You have many, many different resources that are lying down in your website and you don't really know what to do with them. Metadata tech, takes advantage of all of your inventory of marketing mix, shuffles them around until it finds the most successful combinations that lead to pipeline. And so just in this small experiment here or this on, on the screen, you can see that there are about 1,000 different possible experiments that you can run. If you go to your marketing manager or to your agency and tell them, hey, can you run 1,000 campaigns for me in the next month or so? you will not get a positive answer. The likelihood of them being able to run it is, is impossible, it's very, very small. But for a computer to be able to run through this and gradually sift through the combinations that are generating and yielding a positive ROI for you is, is not a problem. And so that is the power of experimentation and the kind of value that a solution like metadata will, will provide. And so, when you start looking at those, those experiments, we start quantifying those. You'll have to hire a data scientist and a data analyst to do the segmentation for you. You'll have to figure out um, you know, a, a math system to actually execute all of those campaigns for you at once. Otherwise, you have to log in and log out from Facebook 
you know, a thousand times to run the campaign and log in and log out from, from, from LinkedIn and set up all those campaigns manually. And so really the, the time saving here is vast. And the, the biggest benefit that you get at the end of the day, something that you can carry and take to your chief revenue officer or chief executive officer is the ROI metric. And that is the lead to opportunity ratio increases them dramatically. So what do you really get from experimentation is opt optimization that you know that you're not anymore spending, you know for a fact that you're going after the right people within the right company that is solved for. But how do you know that you're actually using the right creative and the right message with the right persona on the right channel, so on and so forth? That's what experimentation is used here. And the result is a significant increase in the lead opportunity ratio. So for every 100 leads, instead of generating one opportunity, now you can generate two opportunities. And that is a dramatic increase because it means that you can either cut your budget by half and reach the exact same results or double your results without adding a single um, dollar budget uh, to the mix. So that's a very powerful um, value proposition. And then finally, you get predictable results. Because a computer is running your campaigns and not humans, you can expect a very small standard deviation between the results. Meaning month after month, if you provide the same budgets and, the, and we're talking about the same assets, same content, creative, more or less similar audiences, you will see similar results. You can have the confidence that if you spend X amount of dollars with metadata, with, the, with this particular bag of marketing mix, you're going to get these many leads and these many are going to turn into marketing qualified leads and these many are going to turn into meetings and this is how much pipeline you're likely to generate from it it's a somewhat of a predictable machine at that point point. and so the, the platform is 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 rather new this technology is uh, is new it's taking advantages of many new components that are in the market like uh, deep learning models big data of course that built to or every campaign, every audience, every click, every impression, and of course, the ability to connect it all together with RESTful API. And so since we launched in the first quarter of last year, we have ran more than 60,000 uh, campaigns. This is just up to the second quarter of 2018. It's not even up to date. What it means for you is that the AI is actually becoming more and more sophisticated. Every campaign that uh, is being run with, with metadata is becoming more and more sophisticated. And, the, and you can see it in the numbers in front of you. Companies are usually starting slow. They usually maybe only spend, you know, only, only shift 20% of their, of their total marketing mix into, into metadata. They don't use all of their asset. They don't use all of their budget. Um, maybe they're not going after their entire market. They, they kind of carve out uh, a pilot, if you will, to see can the AI actually execute better. And after a month, two months or three months, they usually see the ROI coming through. They, they may see in the beginning a lower amount of leads, but the quality of those leads will, um, will increase significantly. And after a few months, they see the impact of those leads. No more are they uh, assessing their marketing activities by impressions or clicks or number of leads or cost per lead or any of those vanity metrics that only marketing is caring about. Rather, they start talking about how much pipeline was generated, how much booking were generated, how many meetings were generating by those, by those campaigns. And once they get into that comfort zone, that's where they start pulling all of their campaigns into the, into the metadata platform and want to do all the account-based marketing, brand awareness, sales acceleration, top of the funnel um, campaigns, and really shift all of the campaigns to metadata execution because it saves a lot of time and it provides that optimization and predictability. So just talking a little bit about the results, because at the end of the day, this is what you have to carry to your executive team in order to get buy-in to even try a technology like, like Metadata and PFL. And so that's where we would speak about uh, lead to opportunity ratio and conversion rate going up. And so, for example, a company like uh, Noe saw uh, a 200% lead to opportunity ratio increase. Um, in, the, in the webinar that we did with them a few months back, they were speaking about how the two campaigns, when they ran it on their own and when the AI was running it for them with metadata, the two campaigns looked very different. The internal campaign generated significantly more leads. So when they did it on their own using Facebook lookalike audiences, they generated many, many more leads, um, but those were false positives because the vast majority of those leads were not qualified. They were not the right leads, not the right time, not the right company, and they didn't turn up to be anything. So the company would waste time on, uh, on those uh, campaigns and, and following up on those on those leads, 
but it didn't actually uh, turn out to be anything. The other uh, campaign that was run by metadata generated a lot less leads, but each and every one of those leads actually led to some outcome, either an opportunity to close lost, or a conversation that qualified them out because it was not the right time, but those are the right personas within the right companies. And they saw opportunities within the first three months coming from those leads that, uh, that Metadata campaign generated. Now, the power here is to really take advantage of not only Metadata, but take advantage of advertising channel together with a direct mail channel. With Metadata, think that you in order to be successful with your account-based marketing campaigns, you really want to have an omni-channel um, campaign for each and every one of the channels to, to play off each other. And so when we run a campaign, we always combine three different channels at the very least. One of them is ads, one of them is email, and one of them is direct mail. And the combination of those three is very successful. As an example, when we go after our target accounts, we run, of course, we use uh, metadata to run hundreds of experiments against them. Let's try to see which case study or, or, or which webinar or which white paper or ebook is resonating with which persona because the experimentation will automatically yield different campaigns for them. Like it will find the, the perhaps the economical decision maker and will show them a, a, a type of content like a total cost of ownership that is relevant to the economic decision maker. But to the technology decision maker, it will show a technology diagram because that's what they care about. And so the experimentation will automatically show the right content in front of the right persona from the right account. That's given. But what about other channels? If they're ignoring the ads, how about seeing an email coming from, from a sales or customer success person re relaying to the same exact message that the advertising company is, is, uh, is trying to communicate? And what about them waking up and going to the office and, and they have a package waiting for them with similar message that PFL can, can see, that you can send through the PFL direct mail um, campaign execution model. And so that's really where uh, omni-channel becomes effective and you can use multiple channels to make sure you get the, the mind chair from your persona within the target account and make sure that you get the engagement uh, up and running and activated using those channels. Just to give you a few a few example campaigns that you can run with a combination of PFL and metadata. So the classic one is just account-based marketing using the pre-targeting uh, capability. So that is, you know, choosing the list list of named accounts, finding out the particular personas within those accounts, confirming them with your sales counterpart, and then going after them using direct mail, advertisements, and email. Then you have sales acceleration. Maybe you have in in your pipeline. Maybe you you have. 40, 50 opportunities that were almost closed, but did not actually end up closing, or they, they fell asleep, or they went with the, they're, they're now considering a competitive product, or maybe they're just um, not that interested and they're trying to push you to the budget of next year. If you're trying to close those deals, using, again, a combination between um, advertising, email, and direct mail is priceless because you can actually show them different types of content based on their stage, so they're not, it's not like they, they never heard about you. They heard about you and probably already got your, your price quote. But this is where you would want to show things like customer tes testimonials, ROI documents, um, you know, anything that will improve their confidence that they need to move forward with the decision. Same thing goes for a competitive campaign. We can determine what, which one of your named accounts are using which competitive solution. If they're looking at a competitive solution because they last week they visited the G2 Crowd page of your competitor, you can run a particular campaign against those people using metadata. You can use, actually, metadata knows how to ingest data sets like G2 Crowd in order to make the campaign more Here is why I should consider our solution versus that competitive solution. You can embed those messages in those campaigns. So those are just types of campaigns, just a few examples of the types of operation, the types of sophisticated campaigns you can run with a combination of PFL and metadata. And this is how easy it is to actually go about and execute um, those campaigns. So without further ado, what I'd like to do is introduce you to Marnie from PFL and have her speak about the capabilities of direct mail and how to really think about digital marketing and account-based marketing. So Marnie, this is all yours. Do you want to hand over a presentation? There we 
we yeah, go. Yeah, I just did. Awesome. Thank you, Gail. I definitely appreciate the introduction. Um, as Gail mentioned, I'm Marnie Reed with PFL. Been with the company for just over 16 years. Um, PFL is a marketing technology company at, that also integrates with your marketing automation and your CRM platforms to be able to trigger the send of direct mail and personalized packages. So I think what Gil kicked off early was perfect to hear from a marketer's perspective where they're flooded with technology and working in silos. And then how do you help your marketer pull together all of these different channels and, and really get the return on investment that they're looking for? So the problem stated the way I look at it is, is the, and this is something that I think we've, we've heard many times before, which is people are just getting slammed with digital marketing messages. And it's something that it's everything from email to advertising. And so how do you actually help people get connected so that they're seeing relevant personalized communication? And so the first problem is just the sheer quantity of messages that our people are seeing. But the second problem is something that actually has come with astonishing speed, which is consumers have gotten used to being able to curate the content that they want to see, uh, when they want to see it, and how they want to see it. So look at companies like Netflix or Pandora. I have full capability to say, this is exactly what I want to see. And anything that comes my way that I didn't invite through the front door, it really kind of irritates me that that someone is kind of pushing on me and giving that messages. So I love the metadata IO experience where you're really targeting and building out your audience so you know you have the right people that you're marketing to. And then from there, how do you engage them in all of these different channels? And sometimes digital channels just don't, uh, aren't going to be as effective if you are not engaging them also in the real world. So I love to talk about my inbox because it's something that a few years ago, I, I'm an individual that runs multiple departments. And so I have the experience of getting sold to from every different angle, everything from my human resources background to my accounting background to my partner background. And once upon a time, I woke up in the morning and it's all I did was just to delete email after email after email. And here's marketers that are spending an amazing amount of time building probably some really solid content that people are just you know, flushing out the back door. So a few years ago, I came across, I don't know if anybody has heard of this fantastic little plugin called SaneBox. In fact, I, I should be a sponsor for them because I bring them up in pretty much every one of my presentations. SaneBox is probably the coolest tool that saves my life as a leader in my company because I know exactly what emails that require action to help build my business and what emails actually look like marketing materials or sales materials. And so SaneBox is, is an intelligent routing system that says, here's the things that I think Marnie is going to be interested in. Here's the items that I think Marnie doesn't need to look at right now. So it's called Sane Later. And then there's another section called Sane News. So it looks like a newsletter. So it peels all of these emails out of my inbox. So instead of having thousands of emails, I'm down to about 192 right, right now, which is still high. And these folders that these emails that are going into, maybe once a month, I go in, right click, and then dump all of them out. So really, I think what I'm saying here is most people's inboxes are really looking like a dumpster fire. And it's taking marketers, their, their efforts that they're putting, and it's really pushing them right out the back door. So let's talk about this multi-channel, and, and Gil brought this up about having omni-channel. And I think one of the critical pieces about a multi-channel strategy is just having multi-channel is no longer enough. What you need to do is you need to have all of these channels actually working in orchestration. And when you do that, when you have them working in perfect harmony, what you're going to see is your response rates skyrocket. So your email click rates triple. Digital ads are going to see a lift in engagement. And really the brand recall is going to go up, which is really critical for B2B uh, businesses. So let's, I want to talk a little bit today about uh, the steps that you need to do. So Gil kicked it off really nicely of knowing who your customer is, um, making sure that you have the appropriate data to be able to execute your campaigns. And then the second piece is making sure that everything is timed correctly. And when you think about direct mail, if your timing is off or if your data is off or if your persona is off, that's really expensive to be able to execute those digital or the direct mail campaigns and have not get the results that you're looking for. So 
looking at marketing on multiple channels is really, like I said, table stakes. So to, in order to see the results, you really have to orchestrate those channels together. And to be perfectly honest, this is no small feat. This is really challenging and it requires resources, time, and a lot of trial and error. So at PFL, one of the things that we do is we, we use a lot of behavioral data, which again fits really nicely in with metadata IO. So understanding what a future customer does on our site with our emails or a phone call, um, or even at a conference, will dictate whether we are going to trigger or not trigger a tactile piece. So we focus on consistent personalization across all of our channels. And when it makes sense, we create a specific content for different personas. So today I'm gonna to walk you through a couple of our ABM uh, program campaigns that have been extremely effective for us. So the first one we call uh, warm calls only. So I don't know if anybody walks in their office and gets really excited to see that a phone number has popped up on their phone. And I always love the ones that where it shows that it's from your area code and it's very clearly not. Picking up that phone and getting a cold call. No one likes this. No one is inviting this. And so what we talk about is how do you really warm up those contacts. And the way we do it here at PFL is we do that by sending out a tangible piece that the individual can hold open and really pass around. So it's marketing that they can touch and engage with. And for those of you out there who have received a package, everybody loves opening a package. It's just going to create engagement. So it really, that reinforces your digital response rates. And studies have shown that email response rates rise to a 7.9% when it's combined with a tangible marketing piece. So the other component when I talk about orchestration is how do you involve sales into this process? And so with our integration, our BDRs and our AEs are following up within 15 minutes of that piece being delivered. So we're hitting FedEx's API. We know that it has been delivered to someone's office. Our AEs and BDRs get a task follow-up in their Salesforce that says, Gil has received his package, reach out to him now. And so that really drives up the uh, connect rate for our AEs and BDRs, which they love. So after you've made that first call, you want to start exposing them back into your digital marketing. And the way we talk about it here at PFL is if you can continue to keep someone engaged on the digital marketing front, absolutely do that because that is the most cost effective. It's really when someone is not engaging in the digital, how do you loop into having a physical piece actually sent to an individual, something that's going to be relevant, something that's going to provide value to them. It's something that they're going to engage with. And as always, you want to make sure that you're balancing your resources with the opportunity. So again, this story between metadata IO and, and PFL is great because you should be able to know who has the propensity to buy and where they're at in their buying cycle. But the end of the day, the point is, is you want to make sure that your contacts are not getting cold. So we have had huge success in this next campaign that I'm going to be uh, going over with you is re-engaging old opportunities. You know, our sales team, our BDRs get really excited when they start to get a little bit of engagement from an individual and they think, yes, this is going to be a 90% close rate. But the fact of the matter is, is opportunities die and they die for many different reasons. So we have a campaign that we call Wake the Dead. So the first thing first is you want to identify why did it go cold in the first place? So it could be as easy as looking in your CRM system and seeing what the lost reason is. But sometimes these are things that are outside of your control. So we've had situations where we're selling to a marketing team and the entire marketing team disappears one day, um, which is always mind baffling to me. Um, it could be a change in staff, budget, or even changing goals that have pushed our opportunity off of the table. So the other piece that you have to always do is also look internally. So did we get the persona right? And so if you're not doing your upfront homework of understanding who your target is, who your ideal customer is, it could be that we are selling to the wrong person. So if we make a mistake on our end, we wanna make sure that we move to, to fix it before you actually um, kick off this Wake the Dead campaign. So one way to bring back the momentum is to rally an existing champion. So if you can go back and look into your data and see if we did get engagement, who did we get engagement from? Are they still there? Is it someone that we can reach out to and reconnect with and see if we can get some intel into figuring out why did it go dark in the first place? 
Um, one of our BDRs uh, had a campaign once, actually our marketing team kicked it off. It was a really engaging campaign where they sent a box of Nerf guns to one of the divisions in a company with a note um, saying, we're gonna be sending an empty box to another division in the same company and kind of spurring a little bit of competition and, and some play around it. So then we sent an empty box which said, your other department over here got a box of Nerf guns, watch out, they're coming to get you. So of course, naturally what happened is they had a shootout and at the time that the entire organization was basically shooting each other with these Nerf guns, our BDRs called the account champion. And once the package was delivered, and oh, although we kind of broke up the office fun at that moment, the champion paused to pick up the phone because we were emotionally appealing to the account, creating some buzz, creating some fun, which everybody loves that. So the next campaign strategy that we had is closing a high value account. And these are tough because as we all know, going into an enterprise level deal, um, there's a lot of stakeholders that want to participate in the decision-making ability and the sales cycles can be very long here. So I think one of the big pieces that helped us be successful in this particular campaign is really slicing the huge account into more manageable pieces and getting really clear on the formal and informal account mapping uh, is pretty critical uh, to move this forward. So again, making sure that you've got your data in place with Metadata IO, um, understanding that a marketing manager and a CMO should not receive the same communication pieces whether that's digital pieces or physical pieces, you need to break your personas into influencers and decision makers. So for the influencers, you wanna use a combination of the digital outreach and tangible marketing to really grab their attention. One of the things that we found successful is offering a nice reward for attending a meeting or a demo with us. So asking for a commitment on their end that they will increase their engagement with you. And it also keeps costs down. Um, as you won't be throwing expensive gifts into the wind. And then for the decision makers, we used a lower price point physical send. So if you think about a C-level individual, they may not feel inspired to take a call just because you sent them last year's more, you know, kind of cutesy technical gadget gadget. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your cadence of your digital touches light here, uh, but you should stay in the back of the mind so that rem they remember who you are. And then when their influences uh, mention your brand, the, really the goal here is, is that we're turning the influencers into champions and then setting them loose on the decision makers to help build our sales case. So the sad truth is once you land a large account, your work is not even close to being done. So sure, you may have sold your solution. Um, you got the signature on the contract, you're set up and ready to go. But at the end of the day, if the users are not using the solution, you know that your, your contract's gonna cancel very soon. So most important is to make sure that the users know who we are and how our product is actually helping them be successful in their own career. So identifying those influencers within your user groups and try some of these tips to ramp up the actual use. So taking a look at your existing champions, starting with the champions that you've already earned, and there's some from your sales process that you wanna remember and make sure that you're rewarding through your process, um, keeping them excited and keeping them engaged using your solution. And then you have your target users. So starting with a digital send like an email, targeting everyone that should be using your service and getting them to respond so you can start to mine more data on them, helping them build a better persona for your slower adopters. And then you've got your potential champions. Um, is the other category that we looked at. So finding the potential champions, like the one that we earned in the beginning, um, and using the, the formal and informal account maps to figure it out. The one thing I'll say is, is we've seen huge success with our customers. We have uh, several hundred customers, actually 300 at this point, using the integrated solution between um, PFL and marketing automation and CRM uh, solutions. And I love this story, uh, tying it back to metadata. You know, having all of these solutions working in harmony is what is driving success for our customers. And so we have many customers who we've got some great case studies with where they're shifting a lot of their budget into how do we include a physical send into the campaigns that we're doing. And that is what's helping drive success and results. 
Okay, great. Thanks very much, Marnie. Um, I think that's the end of your presentation. So I think now we're going to have, uh, we have some few minutes left uh, for Q&A. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, we can take questions now if you want to enter any questions that you have in the Q&A box um, and go to webinar. We'd be happy to take a few. Um, I have a couple here that were emailed to me while we're waiting for some more to come in on GoToWebinar. Um, Marnie, the first question is for you. So um, who's, the question is, who's creating the packaging and or, and or doing the printing? Do you do that or is that a, a separate uh, a separate company that does that for the customer? That's perfect, yeah. Good question and very commonly asked. So the way we describe it to our customers is we want our customers to have one throat to choke. and so. Um, and we also want to be all of the, the components of success. And so PFL is a 21-year-old business. We actually started in the print manufacturing business. We've evolved over the last 21 years to uh, be the technology component all the way through to the uh, printing, the sourcing of all of the, the um, products that are in the packages, and then doing all of the pick, pack, and ship. So it's end-to-end -end solution. Okay, awesome. Uh, one question just came in, and I think this is kind of for both of you, but maybe maybe more towards metadata. How does metadata and PFL actually get the list of ideal targets to go after? Um, that's a good question. So there are many ways to figure out um, how to go after the first kind of the list of named accounts. Uh, metadata is integrated to the major B2B data vendors. So instead of manually picking up the call, the phone and, and calling like the Zoom infos and inside view and AG data memorials of the world. Metadata essentially already has all those files, either physically having that those files in, in our application or via an API. And so the way you would do it is by essentially selecting the criteria. If you're uh, choosing your list of named accounts based on uh, your Salesforce, you can just connect Salesforce and and essentially load those those accounts from there. If you're trying to go after net new accounts and you're choosing them uh, based on technology, Metadata will show you a screen where you can choose the technologies and the company sizes. For example, I'm going after companies using um, Marketo or Pardot and are in the US and are between 100 and 500 employees. You can select that criteria in Metadata and you'll, it'll give you a count. And it, when, you're, when you click generate, you can actually choose the particular personas within those accounts that you want to go after. Once you click create, Metadata will automatically go to those data vendors. We'll find those companies using Marketo or HubSpot between 100 and 500 employees in the US. It will go and find those particular personas based on the criteria that you chose. It will plug those two data sets together, clean them, and then offer it to you so you can start targeting them in the different campaigns within the platform. Yeah, and just the, the second half would be, you know, PFL is integrated into any marketing automation platform or CRM system. And so if metadata is doing all of the pre-work to, to get the ideal customer profile and the persona correct, as long as that data is living and somehow marked uh, in your marketing automation, your Marketo uh, or your Salesforce, then we're leveraging that data to dictate whether or not you might want to send a physical piece out to them. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. And another question does come in for Gil um, in terms of the uh, the creative and assets that you use to run campaigns. Um, uh, are you dependent on the customer to provide those, or or does Metadata have resources to help build uh, some of the assets that are included in the campaigns? So it really depends on on the kind of uh, subscription you're on. If you're you know if you already have uh, copies and creatives and content that you'd like to shuffle through and find out which combinations are working the best, you can just upload these as is and Metadata will just leverage them uh, based on what you provided. If you didn't and, for example, you have the same exact template but you want to try to automatically and dynamically modify those, those creatives to fit a different company, like for example, you want to put the company name on the, on the actual banner ad so that every company will get a different ad banner ad, we can do that. Um, if you want to just change the copy but keep the same picture, you can do that through the platform. So very quickly, you can just take an existing experiment, clone it, change the text, and now you have a new set of experiments that is automatically set without you having to upload a new set of creative, so and so forth. Okay, thanks, Gil. So just a reminder that we recorded today's presentation and we will be sending a link to the recording within about 24 hours or so. So you'll have some 
uh, interesting content to watch over your Thanksgiving holiday. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in right now, so thank you very much for joining us. Thanks very much, Marnie Reed, uh, yes. Chief Evangelist at PFL. Thank you, guys. Definitely appreciate being invited. And thank you very much. Yeah, thanks to you, Gil, as well, and we hope to see you on another webinar soon.